speech. <clears throat> uh, 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 is, is to be an honest person, to serve the uh, office of second chief with integrity, um, to um, to you know to be dedicated to the Creek people, you know, because we got to realize that this is the people's office, and people can. Um, uh, um, Think that we are honest people uh, and serve with integrity. I don't think we need to be elected, but um, to I believe the uh, the the, the, the uh, account in question. You know, I wouldn't. I would eliminate that from the uh, chief, uh, second chief's office and put that in other places like social services, where it can be used uh, uh, in. Uh, to, to where it's supposed to be, you know, to serve the elderly, to serve our, our children, and to serve um, our veterans. You know? And that would, um, that's, that's the way that I would eliminate that because uh, I believe that if um, in due time, that, um, you, know, you know, things are going to go wrong. You know? But um, it, with, uh, you know, just, just being uh, around, that type of stuff, you know, um, you know, somewhere down the line, you know, somebody's going to mess up, you know. So what I would do is I would eliminate that, eliminate that account altogether, you know, and put it in the, in the hands of the people and let the people decide where that money should be spent. Thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you to the veterans and everyone else that can attend. I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas. That's an excellent question. Um, as as I can I grab this mic up here? As uh, according for this position, you know you got to understand the Constitution, you know because everything in this position requires the Constitution. And I know with the authority invested me through the chief, with process and ideas as far as transparency on the funds, with the advice and consent of the National Council, we can get a lot of things done. And what's been happening is that the funds have been transparent. You know, and that, that was a big problem. And it's an easy problem to fix. Uh, just transparency. But as far as second chief, I know we're limited as far as our authority, though. But it, it starts with research ideas. Research ideas is where it starts. Everything comes from ideas. And then you go through the process. You find a sponsor, which would be a national council member. You go to the meetings. You know, you get everyone's approval. You get everyone's ideas, opinions, because we're all in this together, we're all in this to do what is eventually going to be legislation. You can talk about it every day, all day, to everyone you want to know, but the way to get things done is legislation. That's how we're going to do this. Ideas with the National Council, with the authority through Chief, will get results. And that's how I plan. Just uphold the Constitution and everything will be okay. What up? Well, first off, you elect the right person in there. Somebody that's honest, experienced, and uh, I think I've proven over the years I've done that honestly, effectively. But I don't agree with uh, credit cards in the hands of politicians. Uh, if they are, you can program them where they're only good for gasoline or oil or something. You don't have to, they should never be programmed to assess type things. And, uh, I think that's a big part about it. Uh, the chief could delegate that money to some other program, or the council could pass a resolution to change that. And uh, there is time for citizens to come in for emergencies. And I guess there's be some way to figure it out to get it to them quick without having to wait on control or right shape or anything. But that's, that's what I would do. Thank you. It definitely goes back to upholding the Constitution and taking it over. Part of my platform is stewardship. It really is those best practice models, and it really is getting back to the citizens and the reporting and the accountability. From the Office of Second Chief, we have not had any reporting come out. You, the information you've received in your annual reports, in your um, State of the Nation address, comes from the Office of Principal Chief. And so the Office of Second Chief has kind of run independently. So it's being fully aware and having citizens be fully aware what the role of Second Chief is. And really, coming back, it was mentioned earlier, legislation. You can't legislate good behavior. You really, and it does go back to an elected leader that's going to have good quality ethics. I always like to think about 
our traditional, our grounds. Those things that are happening there that, you know, you can disagree, but when you, you leave it there, and at the same time, you should be able to handle the business there, and that's the way it should be. We should be able to handle those things, and that's through the people. We do need to put on the books uh, ethics. We need to have an ethics law here. And um, that way you are constantly aware of what the expectations are. I know serving as a national council member, we went through those things. Um, we had a censure in place. We had um, means of punishment, if you will, other than just losing your title. Because you're, you're taken away from the people. So it's about being important to what the people want. And if that money is their money, it's your money. There are no, so, the, so that you're aware now, there are no discretionary funds in the second chief's office at this time. And the other point is from second chief's office, it's working with the people, it's working with the principal chief, it's working with the national council. Far too long have we been independent islands. It's coming back together, and most importantly, reporting back out to you. So that is my commitment, as if, if elected as second chief, is you will see every dollar that comes out and through the second chief's office because it is your money and you need to know where it's at and what it's being used for. Let up. Ethics, morals, and transparency. I thought I think those are three most important things you can do. As far as the money's concerned, I think that uh, this uh, little deal we had in the past uh, month or so uh, should never been done. Uh, had we had some morals and uh, had some ethics, and had some transparency, um, uh, I don't think we'd be here tonight. But uh, you know, in, in uh, the last 35 years, 27 of those years, I uh, uh, had a small deep end in school where all the monies had to be accounted for, all the monies were accounted for, and so as far as business is concerned, uh, I think I can take care of that part of it. I think that uh, transparency, I think that uh, this should have been caught long before it got to this point. Somebody dropped the ball, um, and I think that uh, I think that we need to have some oversight, regardless of what department it comes out of. I think that uh, as uh, citizens, I think uh, you as citizens need to uh, be concerned and come forward and check on these things and so uh, with uh, with that um, and, and again you have to have ethics um, if you if you don't have those things you don't have anything you don't have anything for you guys so uh, uh, think about those things and uh, I think we'll have a good good election thank you well first of all the Constitution is important and I do think that the person that you put in, that you elect to go into this office, needs to have experience to know how to handle a business. Our nation needs to be looked at as a business. We have millions and millions of dollars that we deal with every single day. And you need to have somebody that knows how to do a budget and stick with a budget. Um, as an elected official, I am in charge of, of millions of dollars every day and accountable to the citizens of my town. So it should be the same way with the nation. We are accountable to you. There should be transparency, there should be accountability, and you should know what that office is doing. As far as travel, there needs to be a better way. One thing we could look at is having our own travel agency so that we know where that money is going and we don't have to have a credit card to hold you know, some, uh, or, or to make travel. And that's always been a problem in the past. That's something that needs to be looked at. That's another type of economic development. So there's a lot of things that we need to look at, but I think that the person that you look for, you want them to have integrity, you want them to be honest, and you want them to have experience. Major. I appreciate you starting off that question. I think that's a great question. It's all why we're here today. This is not the first time the second two position has held that account. It was done in the previous administration. I spoke up against it then, and I don't agree with it in this present administration. I just believe that you have to have good business practicums. Good business practicums says that you do not put money in the hands of elected officials to dole out to individuals. You run the risk at some point in time, like uh, Mr. Anderson said, 
of that money being misused or being used for political reasons. It's something that should never be done. If it's important enough to have that type of service for our citizens, then put it under an administrator that is used to running programs, their, their staff is used to running applications and doing those kind of things. It should never be held in elected officials' position. In regards to ethics and all those kind of things, um, I think the first job that one should have in a second chief position is to go out and start developing that trust back with our citizens. I think that's the very number one thing. It's broken down and we can get up and talk about a lot of pretty things. We can romanticize it and all those kind of things. But we've got to put in the hard work and we've got to go earn your trust back. And that's what I intend to do. And I believe that we have to have good business practices. I believe we have to have a full resume, a well-rounded resume. And mine includes business decisions. Mine includes running business. Mine being, mine being involved in a variety of different topics that addresses these things like this. And I think we just, there's certain things that we should never do. And that's just one of them. That's just basic principles of law when you're talking about business. So, thank you. Uh, first of all, I feel like the position requires a commitment in regard to uh, being honest. And also, I feel like that we need to take a look at what, were the, what was the breakdown, identify those reasons of why those, that system was broken down. And again, maybe we need to authorize or provide the controller uh, more strength in reporting and conducting his position. I believe there's three things that's required if the funds are, be, are reinstated. It needs to be accuracy, compliance, and effectiveness. Then we evaluate, we take those three things, evaluate it, and then we identify those risks and make those corrections within the art internal controls or any type of financial reporting system uh, for the council's uh, for the council's information, for the citizens' information, and for the all those that's involved with those funds. Thank you. I absolutely appreciate this question because again, you know, like someone say this, this is why we're here today. Um, I believe in the importance of transparency, and what I'd like to do if elected second chief is to publicize on a monthly, quarterly, uh, you know, basis as far as the expenditures of the department and, and give full disclosure to the citizens because, you know, it, it's our money. It's not the tribe's money. It's not this person's money. It's our money. And I believe that that full disclosure is important. Um, I also agree with not having discretionary funds in the hands of politicians. That just creates a major conflict of interest. What I would like to see, though, and what I'd like to work with the National Council and the Office of the Principal Chief to do is that, you know, there are a lot of needs that our elders, that, that a lot of our citizens have that fall through the cracks, that don't qualify for any uh, certain type of program. So I'd like to create some kind of a special needs or emergency program through social services and work with the National Council and the Office of the Principal Chief to create some guidelines um, so that they can maybe administer that program through social services. I know that's something that was talked about on the council whenever I was on the council, but um, nothing was actually ever drafted as to that. But with my experience in being able to draft legislation, I don't have the power of the vote, but I could definitely draft legislation, present it to the chief and the council, and ask for sponsorship and, and ask for support for it. And also, I would definitely get the input of tribal citizens as well to, you know, say how can we make this program work? How can we improve upon what we're already doing? Thank you. One thing I'd like to focus on is our workforce. Um, there's a lot of things. I mean, we have a college. We have a great college, you know, that's, that could be a vessel in other things we can break into. Not everybody's meant to be a lawyer. Not everybody's meant to be, you know, paralegal. Maybe we can have electricians. You know, we can have people that have wielding jobs, you know, make $15 an hour, $20 an hour. Have these people, because we we're, we're have contracts to where people are working on the casinos right now as far as construction. How many of them do you think are creeks? That's just something to think about. That's something I definitely want to be involved with. You know, I'd love to sit, sit down and talk to the board and tell them, because I've been in the community. I'm born and raised here, and I've been, I've talked to every community and talked to them. I know what their needs and desires are. And like I said, the words you're going to hear from me a lot is process. 
and that's through legislation or even at boards. I just think our workforce is a necessity to reach out to our people for us to improve, for us to grow, and for us to prosper. And I just think that's how I do it. it we, we start with the youth, and I'm definitely not going to forget about the others. I'm, I'm going to take care of everybody. And that's a, that's a real good question. Thank you. I was the first chairman of the Benson Enterprise. We created it back in about 2002 or somewhere around there. And, um, I'd like to correct the question. I've been told that the National, <coughs> excuse me, the National Council last month passed a law to remove the second chief as chairman. Somebody told me that. But, but anyway, going with it, um, it was set up to create intern, uh, revenue for the tribe, and we always took priority in hiring Creek people. And we all want to hire Creek people there, but there comes a time when we don't get the job done. A lot of the other tribes you'll know have hired non Indians to patrol the business, get the business, get the contracts, and then hire the Indian people and train them. The Cherokee Nation is a good example. Our business enterprise and trade and commerce has rolled along here for about 14 years. And they pay a little bit to the tribe, I understand, but nothing like we should have. We should have uh, a thousand jobs out there and good contracts, but we just haven't been able to do it ourselves. There's another way besides trying to do it ourselves. We got to depend on people from the outside. We got to pay them a good salary. We can't pay somebody a small salary to get small work for it, but I believe that's what we need to do. Thank you. Through this position, uh, serving as chair of the um, Muskogee Nation Business Enterprise, understanding first that's only one entity, that's only one business entity of the Muskogee Creek Nation. I think uh, what I'd really like to do an extensive study, sorry, of all the businesses within the Muskogee Creek Nation. We are diversifying outside of gaming, outside of smoke shops, outside of what communities are doing as well. Where we need to be looking into those energy programs, looking at, I know where we're looking at to things into rural broadband. broadband. So looking at those things that we haven't traditionally looked at, um, you see all around us these wind farms, these energy programs, again, are going into place. I'm very fortunate. Um, I have a lot of connections in Washington, D.C. in regards to the federal funds that are out there to help do these studies, just to even see what we're eligible for. So that, that's another thing is just really bringing in some outside experts. I'm no experts by any means, but I know re I have resources. And so reaching out to them and being able to see what else we can do here at Muskogee Creek Nation, but also doing an in-depth study to say what is working, what isn't working, and calling in those experts. And yes, you have to pay people decent salaries to get quality work. But again, it's accountability. At the same time, that's another area because it's an independent agency within the Muskogee Creek Nation they have to be reporting. They have to say, yes, we brought in $2 million last year and here's where it all went. We don't see that. We don't have, again, there's still no reporting coming out. As a former council member, we had a hard time getting them to even come to the table and talk to us. We have to talk and communicate. So to diversify, again, it's bringing everybody back to the table, doing a full in-depth study, looking at all we've done, what we have, and then start reaching out and looking at where we can get funding just to even do some more feasibility and marketing studies to see what's going to be good for the Muscogee Creek Nation, everything now for the individual owner, community, and the nation as a whole. What else? As a board member, I think that uh, we need to go back and look and uh, sit down with them. And, and I don't know everything about the NBC. But uh, I think that uh, I can sit down with them, see what's going on, see what we need to do, uh, and see where we need to go. Uh, you know, I, I talked to a young lady today uh, about her schooling, where she's been, what she's done. In the past, she just finished her, her I think it was her master's, and uh, she said, I can't get a job at Creek Nation. Well, why not? We need to go back. And, and, and that's for our kids. We need to go back and, and, and talk up for them and so that they can get these jobs. And I know this young lady, I know she, she's smart, she's intelligent, she just can't get the job. Why? I don't know. But again, uh, as far as the uh, economic development is concerned, you know, we need to uh, 
bring those kids out of our college and, and, and put them in these positions. I know that we're on, at a ground floor right now. And I know that we need uh, uh, experts. These experts can be our, our, our teachers for our kids. You know, we've got to start somewhere. And, and if we don't talk to our kids, if we don't uh, uh, show them the opportunities that they have, we're going to be in the same position we are now. So it's going to be up to us, it's going to be up to you to talk to those kids, go back and say, hey, you have that opportunity. Let's get it done. And so uh, um, we need to get them there. Thank you. First thing I do is think outside the box. We've been doing the same thing over and over again and we keep seeing failure instead of our progress. We need to really do studies. We need to do feasibility studies. We need to do a five-year plan to see where we want to be with our businesses. Economic development, I feel very strongly about. I think that we need to be helping our, our communities to start their own economic development. There's so many of them that want to, to do something besides a smoke shop, or, uh, and we need to look else, elsewhere other than casinos. So I think that um, we really need to do some planning we need to work with the administration. We need to work with all the departments because economic development is not just economic development is not just starting a business and then saying, okay, we've created some jobs. You have to see it from the beginning to the end. We have to give them uh, support throughout the, the whole process, be it from uh, education all the way up to where we give them jobs, make sure we're getting paid correctly. Um, I heard the same thing about MMBE, and um, what I understand, Second Chief is not in charge of that, but I would love to do that. I, I have no fear of running businesses, I have no fear of running a meeting, and, and just really sitting down, rolling up the sleeves, trying to figure out what is wrong and what do we have to do to correct it. We need to keep faith, we need to stop failing, we need to keep moving forward. And we are not progressing as we should. We start things. It should be self-sufficient. We should not be having to put more money into it every time we turn around. So that business should be bringing more money into the tribe, and we should be creating things that is successful and that's going to benefit uh, the whole tribe and bring more jobs and bring um, wealth back into our tribe. We know. I think there's an external part of the question and an internal part of the question, but I think it also goes beyond uh, MNB. I think it encompasses the whole nation. The, the external part is that I was recently asked to come speak to the then Chamber of Commerce, so I think it's really important that we communicate uh, all the diversity in the nation and our business needs of the nation and to the general public and, our, and develop partnerships with, with, that, what's, with what's out there. The, the other thing in, internally, I think well, we've got to ask the, the right questions. You know, when we're doing economic development ventures, I think it's real important that, and this, once again, this is just getting back to basics. It, it is that if you're going to develop a, a purchase of, of some economic development project, there's some things you need to do. One is have a sound business plan. You've got to have a long range and short plan goal. You've got a feasibility study. You've got to look at the respective rate of return, and then what is the date when you can expect a rate on our, uh, on our investment. And so if you don't have those things in place and we're going out purchasing things, then you run the risk of not having a, a sound business. And, and so, you know, we've got to move, move forward in our thinking in a business concept way and, and just not looking at this deal over here. It looks like a pretty good deal. Let's go ahead and buy it. You know, we've got, we've got to stop doing those things. We've got to operate from a business standpoint. But I think we need, really need to PR our nation. We have a diversity of needs that, um, that can be contractual, but we also have the ability as a nation this nation is really, I was thinking about this when we were in the old Oakdale School many, many years ago, how we prospered as a nation. We have the ability to be our own business partner, and we can do a lot of things internally. We have the, 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 the skill, we have the equipment, we have the, the skillful people, and we have the ability to get them trade and training. You know, we have a lot of people that are not set out for college college, but they're, they're great for trade school. Time. So thank you. Uh, fostering the future, economic development, yes. past, okay, future. Well, I feel like everything requires, you know, a dedication and a study 
in regard to three elements. I think that uh, number one, location. Number two, identifying the labor source. And number three, seeing whether or not, or determining whether or not your highest and best use component, which is also added into your feasibility study, is going to be relative to the area that you build that in. Taking that into consideration, I feel like that uh, we would, you would have to be a standalone marketing person in order to uh, foster those economic development projects, going out and attracting good, sound, and stable businesses or good opportunities that are stable. And uh, you can find that information generally in a uh, feasibility study, this book we were talking about a few minutes ago. And I've always felt like the Creek Nation needs to be self-reliant. And those are some of the things that I feel like that need to be in place is, let, you know, let's get these things going, let's foster these different projects that we have on the table now, let them grow, and uh, hopefully we can uh, achieve our goal as being self-reliant as a nation. Well, I think uh, being on that board is a, a great opportunity to be a, to be a strong voice for economic development. Um, just, I want to give you just a little bit of my history so that you'll understand. And famous hit it on the head with uh, the number one uh, priority is dedication. That's the, the number one trait that any leader has to have in, uh, in developing new businesses. Um, when I was on the council, I worked with Mr. Lee back there for five years to uh, develop the CNG project. We obtained funding 2.5 million from the council to construct two CNG stations within the nation's boundaries. Um, Mr. Lee and the CNG team are currently still working on that project to secure the locations. We did our feasibility study. Um, we got all the numbers. We determined that the ROI would be most likely three or four years or less to recoup the entire investment. Uh, we also saw that it would save hundreds of thousands of dollars in fuel costs for the tribe. Um, another thing that we worked on was, um, and one piece of legislation that I wrote was to fund five of our Creek students through the Natural Gas Compression Program at OSUIT through a partnership with them every single year. Uh, and that's just a start, but those are things that I want to work on. And I look at being on that committee as uh, a wonderful opportunity to be a voice and to continue to work on these things. I volunteered my time for the first six months of this year working on the project. Did not get paid. Um, the project did not have money in the budget to hire an outside consultant, so I wrote the business plan. And I'm just telling you this not to say, look at me, look at how great I am, but to say, you know, that's my level of dedication and commitment. And that's how passionate I am about using the knowledge that I've gained through my MBA degree to come back and help the tribe. Thank you. I worked for the MMBE when it first started in 2002. I, uh, I believe it was a good program when it first started. Um, they, uh, they, they trained um, carpenters, they trained electricians, and it was a good program when, when they first started. But somehow they have, they have lost that, um, that commitment they made, because we, we did a lot of work, like we, uh, we remodeled the casinos, Tulsa, Okmogi, Muskogee, and we trained uh, carpenters at that time. I was a lead carpenter and I was training some carpenters at the time. And as chairman of the board, I would just do the hiring process a little bit different. You know? I, would, I would hire people on their work ethics, their commitment to the job, and their commitment to, uh, to, our, to our tribe. And, and with that, you know, you can build an MNBE to, a, to be uh, self-sufficient, to be, uh, I, I believe that if, if uh, MNBE started out as, as they did back then and continued to grow, you know, they could be working on the casino right now. And they had a good program going, but it was, uh, there was a couple other things that needed to be changed, like the hiring. Uh, and once you, once you bring, uh, bring in these uh, hired engineers, electricians, carpenters, pay them good, and then you, um, you train, you get some good employees in there, you train them, Offer them some training uh, in the even times, and then give them some good benefits because that's the only way you're going to keep your employees. And if you keep, keep your good employees, and then a company is going to grow. I do. I own uh, a small business now. I, um, I and I got business experience, and so I've, I've actually worked on uh, from the ground up with MNBE. So I would be great as a chairman of that board. Thank you.
Well, of course, I'm going to say experience, but I've served four years there. Uh, honesty, dedication, uh, not afraid to let the child know what's going on, have an open office, open door office. And uh, I think the second chief, uh, it depends on the chief, what duties he delegate to him, but going out among the people is very important. I spent many days out among the people in the with the elders and just the schools and things. I think a second chief position is a, uh, well, it's just representative of the principal chief's office. And uh, he can delegate what he wants the second chief to do, but uh, you got to work together. You got to uh, be a team and get the support of the principal chief's office. And uh, it's the, uh, well, you get to watch your budget and uh, take part with the uh, National Council. It's a big, big part of the National Council. And uh, just an honest, straightforward office, open office. I think my platform kind of speaks to that. You really kind of having a game plan because there is no job description, there is no other constitutional authority within the office of Second Chief. So I think it's very important, again, that we talk to one another. Um, and through my platform, I have outlined, it's a one-year platform. This is what I think I can get done in one year. And it's through service, it's through stewardship, it's through success, and it's through strength. Most importantly, being able to realize what's going on here at the nation. And you do have to be a partner with the chief, the principal chief. If anything happens, you have to be able to step into that role. So you have to know everything that's happening at this nation. And that seems impossible, but it, again, it's talking, and it's through communication, it's through reporting, it's all of those things happening at the same time. Uh, I feel like my experience speaks to a lot of that, and being able to do that, and what my platform lends to that, and so those duties being, uh, in addition to what the principal chief may say, yes, I'm going to allow you to do this, or not allow you to do this, or but to me, the power comes from the people, it comes from you guys. And it's talking to you through a volunteer program, through an ombudsman service, through a national census, through a needs survey, through impact groups. What is most effective to you? What affects your life? What affects your community? What affects your home? And at the same time, being a watchdog, what's happening here at the nation? What's happening at the council? What's happening in the executive branch? What's happening in our court system? And talking to one another and reporting back to you guys, here's what's happening. And at the same time, having the courage to say, hey, something's not right here. This isn't good. And you may be a one-person office, but I'm going to go back and talk to all of you and let you know, I need help. We need to make effective change. And the first one is really looking at our Constitution and the role of second chief. So working with you guys, what do you want from a second chief, and can we put that in our Constitution? So those are my replies to what the additional duties I would bring to the table. Other than what's been outlined in the Constitution, I think working with the chief and, and the authority that he gives you uh, is, is one of the main uh, things that a second chief has to do. The other thing I think he needs to be, I think he needs to be a communicator. You know, going to these forums, going to these meetings, you know, you hear uh, the communities having all kinds of issues and problems and things like that. And I think a lot of these things can be solved if you go communicate with them, go to their meetings, uh, see what's going on, and then bring those things forth to the higher level. Uh, you know, on the way over here, uh, well, I went to a, I went to a dinner, uh, and on my way home, I read up on the billboard and said um, the Muskogee Way. You know, when we went to the dinner today, uh, I talked to a gentleman, you know, one of the uh, leaders, I don't know if you call him an elder or not, but, but I talked to him and he said, uh, you know, he said, we could have, uh, with the money that they acquired through the year, he said, you know, we could have bought a hand for all of our people, or, you know, the members and things like that, or bought our gear, you know, and had let them have a good Christmas. Instead, he said, we, Serve the meal for everybody to come. That's the Muscogee, and I think that I think that 
this is what we have to do. I think this is what you have to do as, as a second team is to go out and talk to those people. Bring it back to the nation and see what we can do for them. You know, there's so many entities to create nation, uh, elders, Time. communities. Thank you. Well, I think everyone's kind of talked about um, already what responsibilities are, but I think that the main responsibility for the second chief is to have a little bit of self-initiative and to be a, a team player, to be able to work with the administration and with all the departments, because as a whole, it's all the departments that come together that make the Creek Nation. And so I think that they, that's going to be the most important thing, but I think that the second chief needs to spend time with the communities. And that's one of the things that I want to do is to be able to go out to the communities, visit with the communities, talk to them to see what they want to do, what are, what are their wants, what are their concerns, um, and be able to be that liaison, that person that they feel like they can come in and talk to. So many times as vice chair at Ufala, uh, we have ideas, we have things that we want to do, we have plans, but we don't get a response. We keep hearing people say, well, yeah, we're going to do this, we, we, we want to start some economic development, but we don't have one person that we can go to that will help us to take that next step. And I think with the experience of knowing what the steps need to be and knowing the departments um, to be able to help communities, I think that's one step that should be, I think that that should be an, uh, an office with an open door and with transparency and with the ability to, to help the citizens without enabling them, but helping them to achieve what that they want to do. I think it's real important to have the ability to uh, stand up and speak. We, as second chief, has to be able to uh, stand in for the chief whenever he's not able to go to a funeral, uh, maybe to meetings, sometimes to conferences, sometimes to be able to stand up and just talk about what's happening with the nation. So to have that knowledge of what's going on, to be able to go to Washington, D.C. and meet with a senator or the president or a, a dignitary. So all those things are important to be able to have that experience, that knowledge, and to be comfortable doing that. But, uh, when I uh, became an administrator at Bacon College, I had a meeting with the president and uh, outlining my responsibilities. One of the things that I shared with him is that simply that I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear and I won't tell you what you need to hear so you can make the best possible decisions. And that's the way I would look at this position. I'm Director of Community Research and Development and I spend my time working with our 25 target communities. I am in the community. I'm in the community two or three nights a week. I'm in the community on weekends of my own time. I spend time with their elderly um, two or three times a week. I break bread with them uh, all throughout the week, no matter if I'm here in a Moggy location or somewhere else. I think it's important. I spoke of funerals. You know, I work funerals. Sometimes I'm doing a parking lot. Sometimes I'm doing a sermon. Uh, you, you just have to be involved in, in the Muskogee way of life, as we say it. And I think that's real important, whether it be at the church or Sarah Oil Grounds. I was invited to come speak with the tribal towns. And one of the things they talked to me about is uh, make sure you come back. One of the things that I was talking to the elderly one day, and I got ready to leave, and really the reasons I go over there, and, and I get this all the time, is they say, boy, when you get a second, can you come visit at our table? Because they have a question about health, housing, and all those kind of things. So it gives me an opportunity to share and provide them some direction. But one of the things that, that um, that's not lost on me during this whole campaign, and he's getting ready to put up a 30 second sign, is that this elder gentleman said, when you become second chief, will you take the time to come still eat lunch with us from time to time? I know you're gonna be busy. So it's not lost on me how important that is. My life has been in the community, and I will continue that, so thank you. For years now, you know, I've been uh, drafting uh, position descriptions and my job requires me to identify uh, those positions that uh, is gonna, I'm going to have to draft a uh, position description for. And uh, one of the things that I feel like is essential to the uh, second chief's office is that uh, you need to identify your role. You know, I think that it's essential that you work with the chief, you work with the legislative branch in order to accomplish different things. But most importantly, I think a role is a second chief and a part of the duties is going to require that you listen to the communities and listen to the people and be a voice to those people for those people on these different levels, administrative and legislative. I feel like that uh, in order for us to achieve or progress as 
progress as a tribe, that we actually need to listen to the people and their concerns to help us move forward in any task that we do. And uh, the second chief, that's his responsibility. And uh, again, I feel like that uh, when representing the administration, he's out there promoting the image of the nation and uh, working with the different programs in order to uh, better serve you. But it's, it's so wide of scope, those duties are so wide that uh, it's going to take some time. We have one year, we have one year to do it, just one year. About six months of that's going to be a learning area that you're going to have to learn, and that goes probably for all of us. I mean, I was going to go for me. And, but, but there is an opportunity there. And use it, the position to help you accomplish different goals for our nation, as long as it serves the majority and the uh, second chief is willing to go up and be an advocate for the communities and the citizen, stop. Okay. Try not to move around too much, I'm too short, so if I stand behind here, you can't hardly see me. Hey. <laughs> um, anyway, my, uh, my response to the question is, you know, I've heard a lot said about, you know, the limitations of our constitutional authority, but really I believe that we're just limited by the amount of hard work that we're willing to put into it. I mean, sure, we don't have the power of the vote. You know, if I were to become second chief, I wouldn't have the power of the vote. But again, you know, I know how to write legislation. I know how to communicate with the council, to communicate with the chief, to say, you know, these are, this is a need that's been identified among our citizens. And, you know, what can we do to try to put something like this in place? Um, I believe it's just a matter of how many times you're willing to try because I don't think that there's a whole lot that's impossible. I think sometimes the answer is no or it can't be done this way, but you know, it's kind of like what I've heard said about Thomas Edison that he tried 10,000 ways that didn't work before he was finally successful. And I look at it like that too and I think it takes a lot of dedication and a lot of persistence to be able to accomplish things, but I think working together we can. And I think it's a matter of just persevering, not giving up, but doing everything in my power, uh, everything that I'm capable of to help our people in our communities. Because, you know, you guys are a Creek Nation. You know, it's not, there's no such thing as, uh, you know, the tribe just, you know, centralized here in Omogi. That's not, you know, the offices are not Creek Nation. Creek Nation is our citizens in our community. And I'll do my utmost to try to uh, help any way that I can. Thank you. Well, the number one is service. Service to the people. Uh, as second chief, uh, we have to remember that this is the people's office. And uh, the office of second chief should treat each citizen with fairness, with equality. And, <clears throat> and, that's, and that's what the, the people should feel like whenever they uh, come out of the chief's office that they've been treated fairly and, and equally. And uh, it doesn't matter if you live in Tulsa, Odenville, you follow them, live north of I-40 or south of I-40. You know, we should, all citizens should be given the same consideration, should be given the same uh, <clears throat> opportunities to, uh, to succeed in, uh, in education and uh, uh, job opportunities. And, uh, and another job, of the uh, second chief would be unity. I believe that you know a, uh, a house divided cannot stand. You know, and I would, and uh, I believe that the office of the second chief needs to bring unity from the chief all the way down to to me and you as as citizens. And I believe that's one of the main uh, <clears throat> jobs that the second chief has is to bring unity to all people. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you live. Muskogee, you follow them, Tulsa, uh, all the way over there, and uh, we woke up. We all need to be united as a tribe. And we can, uh, as, you, uh, as a tribe united, we can achieve more things. We can achieve better things for the future of our children. Minota. Well, what I'd like to let everybody know is that um, I know I'm young. Uh, but I did almost work for uh, eight years for the National Council, so I know the ins and outs of the legislative process. That's the word I keep reminding you because everything's going to be a process. What I want to do is be an advocate for the youth, the elders, and also our veterans. Because we got to remember, it's all our money, and with numbers, we can do anything. 
I don't know if y'all remember uh, about a handful of years ago, we had a constitutional amendments that were taking place to where we had a percentage, I believe it was 10% of our registered voters that came. And we got things done, things that people said we couldn't do. The places I've been are to the communities, and I've heard that, the feedback, that I'm trying to be positive, but I want to be truthful. That some national council members have turned their back on certain communities. And that's just how, that's just the truth. That's what I've been told. And things that I want to want to let people know is that there's other ways to do things. It's the process. With numbers and ideas and research, we can get things done through other routes. And I want to do that for everybody. And I want to do that for our youth. You know, all right now we've got all our eggs in one basket for the casinos. I want to be that person that can sit down and talk with anyone. You're going to hear economic development and you're going to hear promises. That's not going to, that, um, that's not me. I want to have commitments and results. I want the money to be transparent and I want to be able to take care of everybody, but it's going to have to be with the process according to the Constitution. But if communities feel strong enough and we have the numbers and they have ideas, let's go for it. I'll name, I'll name a few things, like the Light Horse Administration, Office of Public Government, Office of Public Gaming, Office of Veteran Affairs. These were all ideas that were established through the process of legislation. Things can get done that route. That's the best route, and that's the way to go. What else? Well, fortunately, I work with the current administration right now, so I feel like I, I, I have a, a good working knowledge of what's happening here at the nation. Although I'm limited in regards to the programs that I oversee, I have 12 programs under Community and Human Services. So it is a commitment to this nation. It's a commitment to the executive branch, which is a three-part government, so it's making sure you understand the roles of each role of government. And coming from council, and coming into the, from the legislative into the executive branch, it was a mind shift, and it was completely different. And as a council member, you, that position too, you have to think about everything at the nation. So for me, it was having to focus on my program so I could do the best thing for my programs. Um, so that's definitely a plus, is just being able that I do work here right now, I'm currently on leave, but to expand that role, and to be proactive, and to be seen. Your office isn't just over here in this building. Your office isn't just on this campus. Uh, that's been one of my missions within our programs, and that's one of my missions within um, this campaign, is decentralizing services. Be in Muscoe Creek Nation where you are. We now have offices in Wetaka, Jinx, Ufala, Muscogee. We're expanding. We're looking at where our citizens are, where the needs are, and taking the services to them. So we want to keep, I would like to keep growing that as if it like it is second chief. And again, being seen, being out in the public, you can't see me if I'm behind closed doors. I don't expect you to come to me. I have to be where you are. And then working again with all of the programs and uh, attending their functions, walking the halls, going over and saying hello. Uh, those are important things and those are things that I try to do within my current position is to be seen and be active and be uh, accessible. We have technology, I've always said that. My cell phone's always on, you can call me, text me, email me, I'm going, you're gonna reach me at some point in the day. Um, so I think those are important traits that I would like to continue to elect to the second chief. What up? Five years ago, I was uh, working for Creek Nation as the uh, director of human development. And I see some of the people I used to work with here tonight, and I'm glad to see you. Uh, during that time, uh, I would go out and, and visit with these people, and, and I think this is the, one of the greatest things that you could do as, as, a, as a leader or, let's say, uh, um, a director or whatever you want to call it, is to go out and visit with these people and see what's going on in those departments or, or see what's going on in your great nation. And so, uh, again, this is what I want to do is go visit with the, the people and visit with the departments and, and see exactly what's going on. You know, another thing I like to do is, uh, is, is working with the administration is to, uh, before I say anything about that, but, you know, I don't know everything about maybe what the secretary is supposed to do or what's going on inside the Greek nation. This is what I like to do is sit down and I can get more things done just sitting down visiting with people and uh, uh, talk about just different things, you know, just kind of off the wall. I like to sit down with the chief two or three times a week, just sit down and have coffee with him, discuss things with him, 
uh, not so much personal things, but things going on in the nation so that we can uh, find out what's going on. I can find out what was there than I can by a lot of times going to this meeting or that meeting or, or, or things like that. So uh, again, I'd like to uh, uh, bring those things, bring those uh, uh, acknowledgments to these different to these different departments and uh, and and exactly see what's going on with that and uh, see what's going on with uh, with the chief and and uh, uh, even the council. Thank you. I think it's very important to have a, a good working relationship with the administration. As I've already mentioned, um, I, I did serve with uh, our chief on the National Council, and uh, I uh, you know, know him and his family, and I have met with him on different occasions uh, with the city when uh, we've had something going on down there that, that uh, related with the Creek Nation. So um, I feel like I already have a good working relationship with him. I, I think that I can sit down and talk to him and we can understand each other having been uh, in a, a, an official capacity. I understand his schedule. I understand the, uh, the struggles and concerns that he has on a daily basis. And uh, there's many times that I've been, I, I served on the, or I did serve on the Oklahoma Municipal League and I spent time at the Capitol and there were times that I would run into um, the chief and his staff there. So I, I feel like we have a good uh, working relationship, but also I want to say that um, I feel that he will listen to me, he will listen to my ideas, and um, we can both say that we don't agree on something. I also am not afraid to stand up and say, I don't like that, I don't, uh, you know, I, I want to stand up for what's right. So I think that that's important is that also in, in um, this type of position, you have to have very thick skin because there's always people that don't like you, there's always people that's talking about you, there's always you know, something going on. So you have to not let those things affect you and you want to just do what's right for the people. You have to follow your heart, you have to be God-fearing, and you have to care about people and have compassion for what you're doing. And I think that will make everything run more smoothly. No. Um, I too have a relationship as being Director of Community Research and Development. Ms. Giles is, is my direct supervisor and I also report to the Principal Chief. When I decided to run, I wanted to be the first candidate to announce. So I announced in September. I was the first one that came out. I didn't want rumor bugs and all those kind of things to I wanted everybody to know where I stood. And so I came out and announced in September. Two of the first things I did is I went to the principal chief and let him know of what my intentions were. And I also went to Ms. Giles and reported my intentions with her also. But I wanted to run a campaign based upon my own merits. And so I haven't had that discussion, and I've done it purposely of, of uh, my relationship, what that's going to be with the principal chief's office. But if elected the second chief, the first thing I plan to do is sit down with him, uh, and, and uh, hopefully we can negotiate what my duties and responsibilities would be. I understand that the principal chief's office is the highest ranking office within our nation, whether regardless of who's in that position, I'll always respect that position. And so I, I will come with that frame of mind, mind, but I also come from the frame of mind that I think it's important that the second highest position in the nation be there for a reason. And I'm not being elected by the principal chief, and that's not disrespect by him. I would be elected by this body out here. And so I would be holding to the citizens, and so that makes it important for me to share any information that sometimes might be in disagreement with the principal chief's office. And that's going to be on me to negotiate, facilitate that discussion in a way that he'll receive it. And that's that's understanding relationships and communication, all those kind of things. But that's what I perceive in my relationship with the principal chief. Well, you know, I, uh, uh, a few years back, you know, I used to play second base with the current chief in a few games. So I know that we could work together. But I feel like this position is going to require that we promote his ideas. And it's essential if, to all of us. If we plan to progress as a nation and as a tribe, you know, it's going to require that uh, the second chief works with the principal chief. I think that's, that's an important part of our government. 
And also, I think that uh, the door should always be open by the principal chief for, for me to introduce new ideas if I was elected the second chief. Introduce those ideas to him, and I'm sure that the current administration would be uh, willing to work with me on different projects. But as this, as this uh, term evolves, I feel like that it's important that we jump on board, second chief jumps on board, promote those ideas that he has in place in order to uh, for all try to keep accomplishing and to be successful. I'd like to say I, I would work with the current administration the same as I would with any other administration and have um, by operating with honesty, respect, and communication. I believe that's the only way to work. Um, you know, we're, we are a team. Um, I believe that it's important to, um, you know, operate with, with the respect, you know, the mutual respect for the positions. The honesty comes in because I believe that you, you can't be afraid to tell the truth when you see a problem or you feel like, you know, something is not right. You're uh, not afraid to say that, you know, and, and to speak your mind. But at the same time, you say things tactfully, you say things respectfully, and you say, okay, you know, well, we run into a roadblock here. How can we work together and resolve this issue? Because what it is, it's all about for the good of the citizens. Um, that's, that's what we should be operating from, is how can we do things to uh, the best interest of the citizens that we represent? Because, you know, as has been said, you know, an elected position is that the official is put there by the citizens and you guys should be first and foremost in our mind. So um, I would definitely operate from a position of respect, honesty, communication, and just do my utmost to work together as a team. Thank you. First of all, I would sit down with the chief and, and see what his goals for the nation are. You know, see what the goals uh, of the future are. Um, uh, although we have different uh, idea, uh, opinions and ideas about a lot of things, I believe that for the betterment of the, uh, the nation, you know, we can sit down together and we can uh, set aside the differences for the betterment of other people. But uh, what I would do is, you know, respect him in, in everything that he does because he is an elected uh, official. He is elected by the people. And uh, we've got to respect him because he is the chief of, of, our, of our nation. And, he, and I would sit down with him you know, and get his ideals and get um, his opinions on a lot of these things and, and and express mine too at the same time and sit down at the table and you know and just go over these ideals and see you know what would best work for our nation uh, to, to to build our future to build uh, the future for our children because um, as a, a new candidate to the political uh, arena I believe that I would bring fresh and uh, unbiased uh, ideals um, to the administration, and uh, and I believe that we could work together uh, to be fair and equal to all people. Thank you. Through my experiences working with almost eight years with the National Council, I had the privilege to work with uh, Principal Tiger for a majority of those. Uh, he was one time my direct boss as a speaker. Um, so I'm happy. I, I just want to say I'm honored to be here to speak and be proud of our people and be a citizen of this tribe. I think we're, we're making great strides. Another thing you should remember is that if I'm in there, you know, not only do I got access to the principal chief, I have access to his cabinet and managers because he's known for having staff meetings. So it kind of correlates with the question that I just answered. You know, I can bring them ideas from the communities that I go see and bring it to these managers and directors right there, put it on the paper, whether it be documentation or however we want to present it, and see what our plans are, to see where we're going. Because I think a lot of things, like as far as the youth, I think some services, we have a wide range of services and they're doing great, but I believe it's time to modernize some of these services. There are some of these college students are going to school and we're giving them some money, but nowadays they can probably get three books with the money that we give them. It's time to look into these things, it's time to Keep up with the times. It's time for new ideas. And like I said, I'm happy to be a part of this nation, but I just think we could, we could grow. There's things we need to improve on. And that's just the truth. And with me being there, just me having access to that, and with y'all's help and y'all's input from communities, youth, elders, veterans, everyone, I believe we can get to where we need to be. What up? Well, I've never been a part of this administration. And tell it like it is, I don't agree with everything that's going on. 
But the second chief, it wouldn't be my call. And it would never be my call again. But the chief here and I worked for years and years on the council together and many other things together. And we always agreed to disagree. But that was one of our agreements. So if, Mr. if the chief wanted to work with me, I'd work with him. And with our combined experience in the, in the tribe, we should do wonders together. And it would be for the three people. And this 11 months, we couldn't accomplish a whole lot, but at least we get it all straightened up and make the people, give the people some respect again in the second chief's office. Thank you. This kind of goes back to the last question. Working the building thing with the administration and uh, directors or secretaries now, what they're called, and the communities, um, the citizens, the uh, elders, the students, all of these things are part of, of our great nation now. So we need to work on these things. And this is something that we're going to have to do in this next 11 months. You know, we need to bring back a little pride. And, you know, I, I, uh, I, I don't want to brag, but I, I do know several people that and and good people leaders that that we can speak to that they can bring their message to others so that we can bring that pride back to our back to our nation and i think this this is the ultimate goal right now uh, we kind of got a black eye and we need to fix that so hopefully in the next 11 months through communication with, uh, with our communities and with our citizens, I think we can do that. And it has to be a positive communication. It has to be both ways. And we have to come and meet terms in the middle. So uh, I, before I quit here, I want to thank all of you for being here tonight. And, and uh, thank you, Margaret. Thank you. I served on the National Council for four years for the McIntosh District. And shortly after that, um, I ran for uh, the first woman mayor of Ufala. And when I came into that position, I found that our city had been corrupt, that we were out of compliance in every way possible. Relationships had been broken, and um, we were in debt. So I have spent my last, the last few years of my term, my term is, um, is, is coming to an end, but I have worked really hard to repair those relationships. I have fixed many things. Um, there's a lot more to go, but I think I have a lot of things in place to go. I have made wonderful relationships. I have repaired relationships with uh, many of the entities on the, on the local, the state, and the federal level, all the way from uh, our county commissioners to the PEQ. And uh, I've been able to uh, save our city $3.5 million. Um, there's a lot of work. I've been there. I know what it is to go in behind someone and have to, to fix things, fix relationships. I'm not scared of hard work. I feel like I can take all my experience. I feel like I can take all my uh, resources and my relationships and I can walk right into this position and be ready to go right to work without a learning curve, without sitting there wondering, okay, what do I do now? Um, I have a compassion for people. I have a compassion to serve people. And, uh, you know, I, I grew up and was raised by a single Indian woman that, with no education. And she stressed to us to always follow our dreams, to work hard, uh, to get an education, and uh, to look after your people. And, and that's what I want to do. Right on. I too want to say a moment of Nobia. I appreciate you coming tonight and those on the website and feeling like the nation is important enough to, to value taking the time to come to a forum and listening to uh, what all these great candidates have to say. 
I come from the philosophy of the servant leader. I think it's real important that we recognize that when we're in the leadership role, there's people that we serve. And I think we can sometimes get too big for our bridges, and we should never forget those that we serve. And there's, there's something that comes with that. There's something called accountability. There's something called ethics. And there's something called organization. I've been, been in charge of two programs from the very scratch, didn't even have a pencil on a desk. And within one year, they were nationally acclaimed. One was from the Department of Housing and Urban Development. When I came into housing in February 27th of 2012, immediately made 23 changes. It was going to cost us a million dollars to go repair 72 units that were vacant, that had been vacant for three or four years. I changed the philosophy of that program. And I hired 11 individuals that weren't grass cutters. I hired 11 people that could go in and do carpentry work and remodeling. I put people to work. But I also was able to do 75% of those vacant units and save the nation three quarters of a million dollars. And I did that within one year. So you have to have a game plan going in. We can't talk in details of what all that might be. But you gotta be organized. You gotta have the willingness to put in, the, the next second is gonna have to have a lot of energy. But I think something's real important, I said this earlier, is to get back your trust. And that would be my number one goal. Thank you. I'm accomplishing my goals. I feel like that within one year, meeting with the chief, introducing different ideas and concepts that I thought, concepts that I had, in regard to uh, a goal that I can realistically achieve within a one year span. The, uh, some of the things that I think that we need to take a look at, and which has been a concern for years uh, throughout our nation and to the citizens is the fact that, you know, we need to have uh, some type of uh, structure in place that holds people accountable and responsible for those programs and their actions. And it would be along those lines and introducing to that to the chief to see if that, that we could work together in accomplishing <coughs> some of those goals and ensuring that the uh, uh, citizens get the most for their money. And I don't think that they would, uh, the chief would object to implementing some of those plans. <coughs> I believe I know the leader that Floyd's talking about. And he's the reason why we celebrate Christmas. You know, he's the best example of a servant that there is. And, you know, I, I want to be a servant to the people. Um, I believe that, you know, to be the best leader that there is, is, is the, the person, the leader that is willing to be humble and to be a servant and to think about the needs of the people. And, you know, within a short time frame, I think, um, you know, the most important thing is, is to put as much work, as much hard work, and as much of my heart into it as possible, and not think about, well, oh, this is only for one year, and I'm limited to what I can accomplish, and, you know, so I'm just going to have to forget about these things and only focus on these few. I don't think it works that way. You know, I want to, you know, put everything I've got into this one year, and who knows, it might turn into four, another four, if I do a good job, and the people, you know, if I make my people proud. And that's the way that I'm going to be looking at this position, is um, trying to do whatever I can to be of service and to help make things better, to make life better for our communities and our citizens, because that's what it's all about. That is truly what it's all about. And I thank you guys so much for allowing us to come here and speak today. You guys have been great. I know it's been long, but y'all have been patient. Appreciate you. First of all, I would uh, bring integrity and honesty back into the uh, Second Chief's office as much as possible within one year. And, and second of all, I would go out and listen and hear the people's problems or complaints or maybe set up a, a panel that, you know, they can call in and, and, and people can tell me Tell the administration their ideals, uh, uh, what their problems are, what the complaints are. You know, write it down on paper, and within this one year, uh, you could uh, get a, get an agenda. You know, see what the problems are of the people, see what they're what's on top of their list, and then uh, go out and communicate that to the national council, uh, to the chief, and uh, and just get an agenda for the for the next administration. 
if it's me or if it's somebody else, you know, at least within this one year, um, the executive office would know what the people wanted. The, uh, the, the executive uh, branch would know what the people, uh, what their problems were, what they stated, what they wrote down, and, and if they take that agenda and uh, use it for the next administration, next, next administration, that would be on them. But you know, that's what I would accomplish in, in this one year, you know, to hear the complaints of the people, to hear the ideas, and to, uh, to write it down on paper, get an agenda, and then use it for the next administration. Thank you. Well, first off, uh, I think I handled most of it by just with my experience. Um, for the unfortunate chance of, you know, Principal George Tiger not being able to fill his position for whatever reason due to what I was saying earlier, the process. I know the checks and balances of the legislative branch, the judicial branch, and the legislative branch, executive, I mean, executive. But I also know the internal procedures of the National Council. I know how to get things done. And within one year, I'm, I'm going to try to make everything transparent. I, I want to. I, want, I think all the funding, according to the Constitution, because I sit down and had dinner with someone who wrote the Constitution before I come and talk to people, because I don't make broken promises. I'm not a politician. I make commitments and results. And what I've learned is that we can do a lot of things that a lot of citizens don't know about. I want to be that advocate for you, though. I want to let you know we're all in this together. It's your money. And if the funds are transparent, that's a start. Because a lot of people have lost trust in our government in all levels. And I want to get that trust back. It's all our money. I don't see nothing to hide. Nothing to hide. If you're not doing anything wrong, then there shouldn't be no reason not to disclose it. But I just want to say it's been an honor. This has been great. When this position came up, I had never even thought about it. My phone rang off the hook. I didn't know what was going on. I thought it was an emergency. And everybody told me they need me. Because they know I'm outspoken. But they know I'm truthful. But they know I know how the process works. I know how it works. And I know how to get results. I'm not up here on the scripts. I did bring cards, but I'm not using them. I've never used one card this whole time. All this is from my heart and up here. I'm here for the people, and I know my grandma and grandpa is looking down on me. My mom and dad's here. It's just been an honor. But uh, I guess I'm a, <coughs> excuse me. I'm guessing I'm a tribal elder compared to all these young people here. But, and, but I have been there. Spent four years there, and when I've seen this opening, I didn't need to come. I'm not looking for a stepping stone to another job. I just knew that I can, if I'm elected, I can step in the first day and go for it. The first thing I would do is get elected. I would pull the budget for last year, line item budget for the second chief's office, and see what line item would justify the national council to get that money. And then I would pull this year's budget. I understand the second chief had four assistants, four secretaries. I only need one. Um, there could be money saved. You have to know how to do it, but if the principal chief would let me, I would run that off the way it's supposed to be and uh, save money in the process. Thank you. Thank you. I definitely come in with my, I don't have my running shoes on, I have my moccasins on because I want to be comfortable, so I got to be able to do the work. And so it's being at that comfort level, being experienced, having, I know the insides as far as the process that happens here, as far as paperwork, those sorts of things. I do think you need to build a good team as well. I think it's unreasonable to say one person can do all of this work. Um, so having really highly effective people in the office to help make that office run effectively. I also believe that my platform, I try to lay it out as best I could. No one, no one it was a one year platform, knowing that, you know, I'm not looking at another four years because I need to focus on right now. And I, and if you read my resume, I've been no stranger to hard work. I've been a mom since I was 16 got through college, got my master's degree, ran for tribal council at 24, I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew I needed to give back because this nation had given so much to me and I owed that to this nation. And that was my, that's my mission and my platform too, is to stand in the gap. We have so many gaps and so many times you as individuals have stood in that gap. It was some of you and your elders and your families that paved the way for me to go to college, for me to have a home, for my grandmother to have a home, to have the services we have. And it's constantly looking at the next step and being a visionary. It's not saying, here's what we have right now and it's good, or here's something we tried and it didn't work. It may be time now. So it's always 
looking at the things we've done and recycling maybe some of those ideas. It may not have worked then, or you may have an idea that may have may, may not be at, at the time. And the time doesn't always have to be perfect. But it's that willingness to try, and it's the willingness to step up. And I feel like my life history has proven that, because that's what I was shown. Um, I always like to say, I don't have a famous quote, I always like to say, between my mom and my grandma, they didn't wait for somebody to tell them just what to do. They didn't wait for somebody to ask them to do something. They seen a need and they just got out there and did it. And I always try to be a servant in that way. Just see a need and just get in there and do it. Whether I have funding behind me, whether I have a title behind me, just do it because it's the right thing. So remember to vote December 13th, Sheriff Giles. Come on up.